Hello, I'm Pete Gerlach. I have been a professional family systems therapist for 31 years. And in this video, I want to pull the curtains aside and let you know uh, what is a family system and why might it be important to you if you want to improve the functioning of your family. Let's start with, uh, what is a system? In our context, a system is a group of what can be called elements that interact with each other and reside within some kind of a boundary. <clears throat> That's pretty broad, isn't it? Uh, in terms of a family, here are the elements that comprise a family system like yours. Okay. Um, first, the elements are people. Adults, children, infants, sometimes dead, if they're emotionally, psychologically important, or certainly genetically important. Sometimes embryos are part of a family system. They haven't appeared on stage formally yet, but they're affecting everybody else in the system. So people are one obvious element in a family system. Um, people interact, as you know, and another element of a family system is the relationships between each person and the other members. Um, this is surprisingly complicated. A gee whiz fact, if you want to know how many relationships that may exist in your family, let's say uh, in your extended family, including uh, grandparents and so on, you have um, 20, to pick a round number, 20 people in your extended family. You have 20 times 19 divided by 10, or 190 different possible relationships. Each one of them can range from stressful to peaceful to nurturing. A family system would, a family therapist would evaluate that. Another important element of a family system, your family system, are the rules that govern everyone's relationships and behavior. I suspect you would agree there are rules, some of them are unspoken, some of them are spoken. A rule in this context is a should, a must, a have to, a can't, ought not, should not. Um, fill in the blanks. Most families operate with hundreds of rules that govern their behavior from day to day in normal and special situations. A family systems therapist would say, what are the rules? Are they contributing to harmony or stress? Who makes the rules? And what are the consequences of breaking the rules? So rules are an important element of your family system rules and consequences. Another element that you might not be conscious of often are the roles, R-O-L-E-S, that each member of the family plays. I suspect you'd agree that um, some members play certain roles, other members play different roles. For example, uh, one role is family leader someone who makes decisions in complicated times or conflictual times. Some families have leaders, other families don't. So who makes, who sets the roles in your family? Who decides? Roles are codes of responsibility. Uh, a parent is a role, a parent is supposed to, notice the rule, a parent is supposed to take care of any children in the family. In some families, older children share the responsibility of raising younger children. They share the role of caregiver or caretaker. Uh, husband is a role. Wife is a role. Aunt is a role. Cousin is a role. Each role, there are 15 roles in most biological families, each role has usually an unspoken set of behaviors and values and um, responsibilities towards every other member. 
Uh, for example, you might not expect your aunt to go out and do the grocery shopping for your son. Um, that might not be true, but often it is. So rules are an element of your family system and roles are an element. Uh, roles can either be stress producing or they can provide satisfaction. When roles fit the ability and the knowledge of the person with the role uh, and they like the role and they enjoy doing the role, filling the responsibilities for the role to the other members, then that role is a healthy, productive element of your family system. If the role doesn't fit the person's abilities or interests, it produces stress. That's something a family systems therapist would pay attention to. Okay. An important aspect uh, of most families is subsystems. An easy way to understand this is your body is a system. The skin is the outer boundary of your body system and it is composed of a whole lot of subsystems, smaller systems. Each of the subsystems interacts with each other and has its own unique elements and functions and roles and rules. Same thing with the family. There are several standard subsystems. For example, the marital or adult mate subsystem, mate-mate. Those two people are a subsystem of the whole family. A given family may have several marital systems. Parent-child is a subsystem. Child-child, as in siblings, that's another subsystem. Each one of these has its own boundaries, its own elements, its own rules, its own roles. Um, so it may be useful, especially in large families, to become aware of what are the subsystems, how are they interacting together, are they producing stress or contentment? Broad questions. Have you ever thought about that? A very important element in family systems uh, can be lumped under the heading of boundaries. How would you find, how would you define a boundary between two people? That's not an easy thing to do. We all have them and we behave when our boundaries are violated, would you agree? If someone gets too close to you, you never back off. They've invaded your quote personal space, that's a boundary. Other boundaries determine the degree of privacy or lack of privacy that people have and subcells have. Uh, that can be a, a great source of conflict uh, or it can promote the harmony and functioning of a given family system. There are several kinds of boundaries. The overall boundary around all the elements of a family, which is invisible, can be said to be um, open, meaning that people and information, like ideas, can freely enter the family system or leave the family system. Those are open, or the technical term is permeable, boundaries. Like a cloth allows water drop, dropped on it to flow through and drip to the bottom, that's a permeable boundary. Things can pass through it. Some families have semi-personal boundaries around all the people and relationships. That means that selective people and ideas can come in and go out. Other families have rigid, impermeable boundaries in which they allow very few people to come into their family and very few ideas. Typically, you'll hear such people in such families say, our family business is nobody else's business. What happens among us stays among us, okay? That can be a rigid, impermeable boundary. It's often a sign, if it's extreme, of family dysfunction. dysfunction. So, so what? Um, let me just quickly run through this again. A system is comprised of elements. 
a family system's elements include the people of, of several generations, including dead people, uh, including in-laws, various subsystems, uh, couples, parent, children, siblings, uh, relationships among various people, that's an element of your family system, uh, the rules that govern the behavior of people in your family, often they're unspoken, but people get upset if they get if the rules get broken. The roles, what does each member of the family have the responsibility to do? And what are they not responsible for? Um, the boundaries uh, above both subsystems and the whole system are of several types and are very important in family functioning. One last variable that family systems therapists pay attention to is the system's stability. How stable are all these elements as the days go by and the environment shifts? Are they pretty stable or do they change a lot? Unstable family systems are often described as chaotic. Um, other, more stable families are described as serene, happy, content, things like that. So what? This is either, a, well, that's interesting, but I don't see any practical value to it. Or, you may choose to see this concept as a way of measuring, how's our family doing? What kind of a family do we have? And what are our family problems. Using family systems concepts can help you identify and then resolve significant family problems among the relationships, the rules, who makes the rules, who enforces the rules, who sets the roles, are the roles appropriate, are they stressful or not, is the family stable or not. These are useful questions in trying to sense and improve the functioning of your family. One final point I want to make. This uh, group of videos that I've made and my website, the Break the Cycle website, proposes every person's personality, like yours, can be called an inner family. It's composed of a group of subcells, each of which are just as unique as the members of your family. So this concept of family systems applies just as well to the family within your skin, in your brain, that's running your life. It can be very interesting to do an assessment of your inner family system. If you want more information on this or want to reread uh, what I just mentioned to you, there's an article in Lesson 4 in my nonprofit website at sfhelp.org the article will reiterate what I just told you and add some more background. Feel free to browse there and learn more about your unique, marvelous family systems, inner and outer. Thanks for watching.